Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Live at 55 today um, on this Monday morning. We are in Revelation chapter 14, and we are looking at verses 12 and 13 today. Revelation chapter 14, verses 12 and 13 says this, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Here we have uh, a little bit of a contrast. Yesterday we looked at those who um, reject Jesus, those who take the mark of the beast, those who choose to follow Antichrist and not Jesus Christ during the time of the tribulation. And we saw that their fate was, um, well, separation from God in uh, a place of fire. We would call it the lake of fire. More common term would be hell. So now in contrast to those who don't follow Jesus or believe in Jesus, verse 12, he says, here's the patience of the saints. So now we're talking about those who do choose to follow and believe in Jesus. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Verse 13, then he says, I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. He says, he hears a voice from heaven, John does here during this time of the tribulation. And uh, the voice is saying that those who die are actually blessed from this moment forward. And that's actually an interesting thing to consider because so often we think of, um, we can almost think of death as a punishment or we think of it as um, the, um, the consolation prize. Um, it's not. It's actually can be a blessing. Death can be a blessing, but because on this end of things, when we think of um, life as we know it, a loved one that we love no longer being with us, uh, because so many emotions and sadness and heartache is part of that, we, 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 we often miss out on realizing that death for the believer, the one who has faith in Jesus, as verse 12 says, is actually a blessing. You, you know, so often people say, you know, I just don't understand why, you know, so-and-so maybe had to die, or I don't understand why, you know, someone who's so young or someone who had so much life ahead of them, it's like, why do you think that death is worse than life here? Because it's not. We just, uh, our perspective is a little off kilter. It's a little whacked, our, our, our view when it comes to death because of the emotion that's involved with it on our end. But truly seen for a believer, um, death is a blessing. He says, blessed are those who die from now on, who die in the Lord. They got Jesus for now on. He says, yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Blessed are those who die because when those who die in the Lord, when those who have faith in Jesus die, what happens to them? He says that they rest from their labors. They experience rest. Now that's a, a good thing. Again, this is contrasting. Uh, yesterday he talked about those who don't believe in Jesus, that they're not going to have any rest. For all eternity, part of what hell has to offer is no rest. Yet in contrast here, for those who uh, die in the Lord, for those who are believers in Jesus, they enter into an eternal rest rest the bible says now i find that interesting because here's something that we as believers need to realize you know culturally uh you have a tombstone and on it it says r-i-p that stands for rest in peace now here's the deal for as believers as followers of jesus our rest doesn't begin when we die our rest actually has already begun you and I have already entered into the eternal rest that we're going to be able to experience for all eternity. And I know that because Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, he lets us know this, or Ephesians 2, 14. He says, for he, speaking of Jesus, for he himself is our peace, our 
Shabbat our shalom our rest who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation Jesus is our rest Jesus is our peace so we realize that we don't get to just rest in peace when we die we can actually rest in peace now our peace our rest begins when we enter into a relationship with Jesus and that peace and rest continues on from that day forward forevermore so he says man look forward to the fact that those who die in the lord the spirit says that they're going to be able to rest from their labors heaven is a place of rest it's a place of of, of peace this world has is so uneasy a lot of our lives maybe right now are very uneasy we don't know what's going to happen here or there maybe you have uncertain news health wise or financial wise or in your family and there's this uneasiness about your life that uneasiness isn't going to exist in heaven there'll be rest there'll be peace in heaven but that rest and peace is something we can experience now on the earth as we find ourselves in christ as we continue to walk with him that rest and peace is something that we can possess now we don't have to wait for uh the afterlife to experience that so essentially what this the spirit says here to john is that uh hey life sucks but heaven's eternal and that's something we have to remind ourselves of sometimes you know you might be going through a tough season of life right now life sucks but guess what heaven is eternal the rest that we get to experience in jesus is going to be everlasting rest so don't lose heart don't be discouraged because yes it's tough sometimes but heaven is eternal this is just a vapor this is just a moment and it might seem like a long time right now because in i don't know uh, you know perspective of your life it is but realize that man jesus man the rest that's found in him what he has waiting for us for all eternity it's going to be like nothing compared to this but now he goes on to say here as we wrap up verse 13 he says that uh they may rest from their labors and their works follow them these believers who die they're resting from their labors they rest in the lord and their works are following them that's interesting because ask yourself this question what is going to follow you because revelation chapter 14 verse 13 tells us that our works follow us so what is going to be following you if if what you do is what follows you is what's going to be following you going to be good or not so good as the psalmist says in psalm 23 6 on this idea of what follows you he says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever goodness and mercy follows the psalmist because guess what that's what he's doing our works follow us goodness and mercy follows him because that's what he's doing so if our works follow us what's following you you know some people say oh you know i just can't get ahead in life blah 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 there's always this this is always around the corner blah 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 it's like maybe part of the reason is because and it goes back to the whole sowing and reaping principle but it's like what you do follows you so it's like maybe you need to stop doing what you're doing and do something else because uh, whatever you're doing doesn't seem to be working, right? Maybe change some things up a little bit because uh, y y y what you're doing is following you. And um, in uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 23, Jesus tells us this on this idea of our works following us. Um, uh, the psalmist says, hey, goodness and mercy follows him because, well, that's what he's doing. Uh, what would follow us? Uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 23 Jesus says, uh, his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Jesus um, wants us. It's not about quantity. It's about quality of what we do. It's not about doing a whole bunch for God as much as it is just being faithful with what God has entrusted you with. And as you're faithful with what God has entrusted you with, uh, more uh, can be and will be added to you but don't get into this trip of man in order to have my works follow me and I need to be doing a lot of good things for God no 
do what you do for God well. Do good for what you're doing for God. Do well at what you're doing for God. Uh, have that be your focus instead of the quantity. Have the quality be it, and uh, we'll see that take place. Uh, from this, though, we realize in verse 13 that the things that we do do matter. And sometimes we can lose track of that, especially maybe someone like me who really loves talking about the grace of God and who really loves focusing on what Jesus has done for me because that's what heaven is truly all about. Um, sometimes um, I can undersell the importance of what we do now with our redeemed life. But it is important. What we do does matter. What we do now does matter. And we have to realize that, that, that the, the choices we make, the, the, the things we choose to do with our redeemed life, as far as in service to the Lord, that stuff's going to follow us into eternity. So are you going to have goodness and mercy following after you? Or is it going to be selfishness and hatred and bitterness? Because their works follow them. Their works are not getting them to heaven. They've got to heaven based upon the merit of Jesus Christ. But the stuff that they did for Jesus on this earth follows them into eternity. We call that the Bema Seat of Christ, the judgment seat of the believer. It's not judgment of heaven or hell. It's the reward seat. It's, the, it's where the rewards will be handed out there. And you can read about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, actually. So there's the deal. We have... Jesus, the reason why we go to heaven, but our rewards or our works do follow us. Our labors do follow us. So what's going to be following you when you die? Because, what, um, yeah, it follows you in this life. It follows you into eternity, what you do for the Lord. You're faithful with little. He gives you more. So here in uh, Revelation chapter 14, verses 12 and 13, we're encouraged with the fact that, hey, death can actually be a blessing for the believer. And we have to remember that perspective because it's so easy for us to not realize that. When an accident happens, when death happens, when sickness happens, it catches us off guard. We get that punching feeling in our stomach. We feel really bad. And it's like, man, if this person died in the Lord, uh, blessed are they. That's a blessing for them. They're, they're with Jesus. They've entered into that rest, the contrast of the rest of heaven that doesn't exist in hell. Hell is void of that rest. Heaven consists of that rest. But we don't have to wait till death to enter into that rest. We can experience that rest and that peace from Jesus now in a relationship with him. And our works follow us. Let's pray that we would be able to do goodness and mercy so that like the psalmist, goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. And those things will follow us into eternity. Simple stuff good stuff. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for today. And Jesus, we just ask that you be with us on this Monday. And thank you, Lord, that we just see here in Revelation chapter 14, some simple truths. And Lord, help us to just uh, walk in you today. Lord, help us to be people who are of grace and mercy. Lord, so that those will be the things that follow us. Lord, not just throughout this life, but Lord, throughout the next. And Lord, we thank you for the rest that is found in you. Lord, that we can rest in you. Lord, that we don't have to uh, be antsy or, or have uneasiness about our lives now. And Lord, for sure, we know that we're not going to be experiencing that in heaven. Lord, heaven's not going to be uneasy. Heaven's not going to be a place to fret, Lord, because there's rest. Lord, as we just trust and rest in your rest and your peace. So I pray that we'd be able to experience part of that today as we just simply trust things over to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hope you guys have a great Monday. We will um, uh, see you tomorrow morning as we continue on in Revelation chapter uh, 14. And um, let's see. Don't forget about Christmas Eve, Thursday, the 24th at 6 p.m. at Veterans Memorial Park. Love to see you there. So uh, get that on your calendar. Thursday, December 24th, 6 p.m. down at the park. There, across from the bear, Christmas Eve service. Hope you guys were able to join us for yesterday's uh, Christmas celebration. The kids did an awesome job for sure. 
and then uh, you know a little Christmas message afterwards and it was just a, a good day yesterday was uh, a blessed day for sure so I hope you got to check that out if not it's here on Facebook and on YouTube you can watch it maybe later on today and uh, be blessed so we'll see you uh, tomorrow morning as we continue on in Revelation